Yeah, nice to be on, John. Well, let's uh, let's uh, talk about uh, your association with uh, hockey here in Muskegon. You came the very first year that uh, there was hockey back with the old Muskegon Zephyrs in 1960. Talk to us about uh, where where you were uh, where you were from and how you got word that there was a, a hockey team here in Muskegon. Well, John, I was uh, playing in Philadelphia, and uh, Moose Lalo played half a year with me in Philadelphia in 1959-60. And uh, Moose had uh, come to Muskegon because of the new franchise, and he knew the owner, Jerry DeLise, from Connecticut days back in the, in the old Eastern League. And uh, so he came to Muskegon, and uh, they were looking for players, and... Uh, so he called me, and I was having a little trouble signing with the Philadelphia uh, Ramblers at that time. And uh, so he said, anytime you want to come to Muskegon, jump on the airplane. We've got a ticket waiting for you. And uh, that's what I did, and I've been here 50 years. Talk to us about, now, back in those days, you were drafted, uh, like we were talking when Rick and I were setting this up, there was only six teams in the National Hockey League, the original six, and uh, you were drafted by one of the, I mean, I'm assuming you were, I mean, you can tell me, but I, I'm assuming you were drafted by somebody, and then you, were you assigned to, you said you were at Philadelphia, is, is that how, I guess, I guess tell us how your kind of hockey career started, maybe that's what I'm asking well, you, right? Well, I was uh, drafted by Montreal Canadiens in 1953. I was 15 years old. Wow. And uh, then, uh, I, so I went to uh, their farm team, which was the Fort William Canadiens in Thunder Bay, Ontario. And uh, from there, uh, I played my junior hockey, which was, uh, and in 1957, I went to Montreal camp. And as you say, there was only six uh, teams in the National Hockey League. And... Uh, there was about 150 players at camp, so <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't very good. And they just won two Stanley Cups in a row, so right. uh, I, I think I ended up with the wrong team. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, but but that's life, you know. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's been it's been a good life for me. Uh, I've been in uh, uh, Cincinnati in the IHL, and then I was in Philadelphia in the Eastern League, and then of course Muskegon. Uh, I've been here 50 years, so. Uh, I, I had, uh, you know, 13 and a half years, uh, basically, in the International Hockey League. Just, just to kind of put it in perspective, Brian, we're talking, of course, to Brian McClay, hockey legend here in Muskegon. Uh, when you were drafted by the Montreal Canadiens, was there anything like a signing bonus? Or was there, what, what kind of money were we talking about as far as a, a contract to play hockey? Yeah, they just uh, put you on a C form, give you a few hundred dollars signing a C form, saying that, well, you belong to them, you know. Uh-huh. That's that's basically what it was uh, back then. They used to go around sign C forms, and uh, actually, I could have went to four out of the six teams. I could have went to Toronto, Montreal, Boston, or New York. Mm. And of course, uh, at that time, I, I, if you know, being a kid, you just don't know. But uh, New York or Boston would have been the best bet because their yeah. their teams were just so so at that time. I- exactly. And now, now, where are you from originally, Brian? My hometown is Kenora, Ontario. Okay, and uh, which is pretty nice because they uh, they uh, uh, won the Stanley Cup in 1907, <laughs> and uh, I I had a hat on with 1907 on, and some guy says, "Oh, you played for them?" I said, "Oh yeah, thanks a lot." <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, in your childhood, I mean, you know, we we hear about the the hockey players back in the day, you know, skating on the on the frozen ponds. Is that was that pretty much life for you as well, uh, Brian? Growing up, oh, oh definitely on on uh, on ponds on on the lake uh, Lake of the Woods. Uh, it's a big lake, uh, you know, it covers uh, a lot of territory, but uh, it, it was it was a lot of fun uh, uh, back then. You know, you're outdoors and it's forty below, and you're skating out of the outdoor rinks with uh, you know and shoveling the snow all the time to get the ice clean sure so it, it was a lot of fun when you were with montreal or when you were were, were you were that camp with 150 other guys that uh, you know trying to uh, get one of those precious jobs here can, can you tell us any of the the guys that would go on to have a pretty substantial national hockey league career that you were rubbing elbows with oh yeah you got uh uh, Boom, Boom Jeffrey on, uh, uh-huh. you know, Gene Belbo, wow. Dickie Moore. Uh, actually, the Rocket was still playing, Rocket, and then the Pocket Rocket, Doug mm-hmm. Harvey, Jacques Plant was making the first mask at that year. Wow. And uh, just uh, a lot of good hockey players. 
you come to Muskegon that first year. Um, you didn't start the year here, is that correct? I mean, you came in what midway through that for that very first year of hockey. Is that how that worked, Brian? Yeah, I got here and they, they had played twelve games. They had won one, tied one, and lost ten. <laughs> and I, I got here and I said, uh, hey, "Have you got any more hockey players coming in? <laughs> it sounds like you need some, you know." And uh, he said, "Yeah, he said yourself and another right winger and Joe Morno and." Uh, a goaltender, uh, and I said, well, what's his name? He said, Jimmy McLeod. I said, Where he, where's he from? He said, Thunder Bay. I said, well, that's where I played my junior hockey. And uh, the only uh, Jimmy McLeod I knew uh, that played that was from Thunder Bay was trying to make a junior team as a defenseman. He wasn't a goaltender. Uh-huh. I, said, I thought, well, this can't be the same guy. But right. I walk in the room the next morning, and there's Dumbo sitting there. <laughs> and I said, oh, my God. God, we're what got to be in trouble. I mean, we're looking for a gold dinner. <laughs> but it turned out this guy uh, was unbelievable. Uh-huh. And uh, it's it's a great story for Jimmy because uh, he come to he went to uh, Spokane, Washington, where his brother was playing as a as, as the trainer back then. The trainers was a spare goaltenders, uh-huh. and he won a championship there. He beat the goaltender out of his job, won a championship there. Wow. Um, to Muskegon, won a championship, went to L.A., won a championship, went to Frisco, won a championship, and went to Portland, Oregon, and won two championships. <laughs> Holy cow. And it ended a happy year with St. Louis Blues in the National Hockey League. Man, that, that so, is, that's phenomenal. That is unbelievable. That is unbelievable. But, uh, you know, talking about the, uh, the hockey and then uh, the, the, the team they have in Muskegon here right now is the uh, – is a is a fun team to watch, and mm-hmm. uh, they got some good hockey players, and it's it's a fast moving game. Uh, the IHL, uh, 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 I'm very happy this year with it as far as is the speed and and the uh, uh, the, the play. You know, it's mm-hmm. uh, it's been uh, good hockey. So I advise a lot of people that haven't gone to the games for a long time. I, they say. You know, go down and watch it. It's a very exciting hockey, and they put on a good show. And uh, uh, it'd be nice if they start support, supporting the hockey team like they used to back in yeah. the olden days. Uh, it'd be nice to have three, four thousand people at a game all the time. So, but uh, if we want to keep hockey and the skiing getting here, I think uh, we should get out and su- support the hockey club. We're talking to Brian McClay here on the Power Hour, hockey legend here in the Muskegon area. And, Brian, I would think that mentioning the newer hockey players playing currently, they have some advantages that you probably didn't have back then. Describe mode of travel, lodging, and things along those lines. Well, when we I first came here, we uh, actually had traveled in four cars, four players mm-hmm. to a car, but... Uh, that was uh, basically we only had 13 players then, and then a trainer and an owner and uh, a coach. So uh, we traveled in cars, uh, four four in each car. So uh, it uh, was uh, pretty tough at times. You know, you uh, say you play a Friday night game here uh, at 9 o'clock, Friday night game back then. Uh, after the game, you get in the car and you drive to Omaha, Nebraska, mm. and play the next night. So <laughs> you get there about noon, have your steak, uh, jump in bed for a few hours, and we always played pretty well there. Uh-huh. And not to mention, of course, you're playing hockey in the winter time. You probably came across some pretty bad roads. The roads wouldn't have even been the same quality as they are today, and you had to at least have vehicles big enough to carry your equipment. That's right. It's just uh, the thing is uh, we've run into a few snowstorms between Omaha and, and Minneapolis-St. Paul, and uh, actually – had to uh, book up into hotels because we couldn't even see the road. So, but uh, things like that happen. And uh, back in the olden days, there was uh, a lot of things happen. You know, yeah. Even the old buses we used to have, uh, sometimes had to have the, sh- the sh- skate laces tied to the wiper braces, and one guy on the other side, and one guy had to pull them <laughs> back and forth. You know, <laughs> uh, uh, the old war stories. Yeah, exactly. Now the second year uh, of correct me if I'm wrong here, Brian. You uh, the Zephyrs won the uh, the Turner Cup. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, we what happened was the first year when I come here, we were one at one one and tied one and lost ten. We ended up playing uh, St. Paul in the finals, and they beat us four games straight. And the following year, uh, we we turned the favor for them, and we beat them four games straight, and. 
and two of the period, two of the games were two periods of overtime. And uh, we had a good time. And the last game was in St. Paul, and uh, we beat them two, two to one in uh, two periods of overtime. And I, I had gotten both goals, so uh, it was a pretty good night for me. <laughs> At the time you mentioned him, he uh, went on to coach here for for a lot of years. He was actually a player coach uh, when that started for what probably the first five years, I think, of hockey here in Muskegon, right? Right, he was, John. He uh, he was a player coach, uh, I think, five six years. And uh, uh, then he was a general manager. So uh, uh, Moose was a great guy, and uh, uh, everything else uh, with him, you know, uh, he uh, became the general manager and that. And uh, and then I took over for him after sure. that. And uh, uh, basically, in uh, '79, I got out of hockey and uh, I went to work at the paper mill for 20 years. Wow, you had to get a real job, right? <laughs> <laughs> know what that's like. Um, talk to us about Moose. I mean, uh, he's kind of one of these, uh, you know, watching him as a kid from afar, he seemed like one of these no-nonsense uh, guys. I mean, he seemed, obviously, he's from the old school of hockey. He was, a, he was a, kind of an enforcer. I mean, he, he, would, he could handle himself on the ice, certainly. And uh, behind the bench, what, what was he like? Was he really a no-nonsense uh, type of guy? Oh, yeah. Moose was a great guy. I mean, uh, you know, he had a good sense of humor, but... Uh, he could get uh, real ticked off, but uh, he had some good players. You know, we had a good nucleus of a team back then. We always had eight to nine guys coming back. So what we do is uh, once we got the rookies on the on the ice with us, uh, uh, he, he, you know, just uh, he'd give them a little bit of insight on the hockey game. But uh, when you got veterans on the team with the, the with rookies you, you can set them straight if they make a mistake while you're sure. playing so right that's a lot better on ice and 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 it made a better player out of them Jerry Delise, of course, was the owner, and uh, boy, I've, I've talked with uh, hockey players before that played for Jerry, and he, he was a he was a good businessman, I guess, but uh, he was uh, he was kind of, I guess he was an interesting guy. I'll leave it at that. How was uh, how was your relationship with uh, Jerry? Oh, Jerry and I got along very well. You know, uh, Jerry liked to talk. You know, <laughs> uh, we'd go get our paychecks, and everybody'd have to sit around for hours. You know, just because he liked to, once he got the guy in, going to give him his paycheck, and they start shooting the bull, you know, and yeah. uh, all the guys used to get a little ticked off at that because <laughs> that waits so long, you know, <laughs> instead of just giving the players the checks and that, right. and get out of here, you know, but uh, no. <laughs> that uh, th- then in 1968, and this is one of my favorite uh, favorite teams. Uh, the, the, by then, they changed over to the Muskegon Mohawks, and that's the year I think a young guy named Gary Ford comes here. But probably more importantly, Carl Brewer, an NHL veteran, comes to Muskegon, and, and that's kind of an interesting story. Talk to us on how uh, Carl uh, made his way to Muskegon. Well, uh, it was a, it was a funny thing, you know. Uh, uh, Actually, that that team, 70, 67, 68, I think was the best hockey club mm-hmm. there ever been in Muskegon. I agree. And uh, what what happened was, uh, uh, I don't know, he had something a falling out with Toronto or something, and uh, he talked to Jerry, and Jerry offered him some good money to come here. So that's what he did because then he played in Detroit after that also, and uh, then he went over overseas to play also. But that's basically how we got here and. Uh, he come with his brother Jack, and and uh, that's the year in '67 when Gary Ford, uh, Hugh Harris, mm-hmm. uh, Kenny Kelly, uh, Bob Smith, Bob Tambari, and Hugh, uh, and as I said, Hugh Harris, who was a good hockey player also. Did- and it's so funny that uh, that year we had such a good hockey club. Even at training camp, we had a kid that didn't make our team that scored. Uh, 50 goals twice in the National Hockey League with Philadelphia. Uh, his name was Simon Nolette. No kidding. And, uh, it, it's unbelievable. So, but uh, it's pretty nice. And actually, uh, I was home this summer, and uh, the uh, uh, the captain of the Philadelphia Flyers, as of now, is from my hometown. Uh-huh. And, and, uh huh. And and he is, I think, 23 years old. And uh, I think he just signed a three-year contract worth sixty-five mil. Wow, so that's not too bad. <laughs> no. in, in fact, speaking of that, Brian, uh, that was pretty similar to the money that you guys made back then, right? right. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I made a little more than that. <laughs> okay, that's good. You were one of the lucky ones, though, and of course you deserved it. So, <laughs> yeah, but it more likely it was sixty five hundred a year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> talk to us about, like I said, watching you guys, the Gary Fords, and and I always talk the you know the the, the story that that really has people drop their jaw and they don't you know they don't uh, necessarily believe me, but I actually saw a game where where Gary pretty much killed a penalty all by himself. I mean, he just—he was just a phenomenal talent, wasn't he? He was a very, uh, very phenomenal guy. You know, he could hang onto that puck a lot, and he could rag it. So, and he liked to do that. He zig and zag, and he's all over the place. But uh, good hockey player, and uh, uh, I enjoyed playing with Gary. Yeah, and we were such good friends. So, and it's a bad thing that we lost yeah. him last year, and uh, at 61 years old, and uh, so. Uh, it's pretty tough. Yeah, he was he was definitely a great guy. Another guy that, that we all liked, he was the enforcer, old number five, and I know you were very close to him as well. Uh, Len Marguerite was really a big uh, fan uh, fan favorite here, and uh, I know you were very close to Len as well. Yeah, well, I played uh, junior hockey in Thunder Bay, and that's where he's from, and uh, Len has a twin brother, so mm. they were about six or seven when I played there, and then he come here to Muskegon, and uh, we've uh, always uh, been... Uh, uh, close, and uh, he was a, a great guy and a, and, a, and an enforcer on the ice. Uh, he uh, he didn't take no bull. You were one of, as we said, the, uh, one of the core guys that that uh, played here. Uh, and and it, there comes a point where you're getting a little older, and, and obviously you know that you're probably your dreams of going to the NHL or even higher are not uh, not going to be realized at that point. Brian, I mean, uh, and, and from everything I hear in talking to you, you kind of became obviously the leader. You became the captain of the team, and were you were you more or less kind of like the the mentor to a lot of the the younger guys that that were uh, on a fast track to uh, certainly at that time the Central Hockey League and eventually the National Hockey League? Oh, yeah. We, uh, you know, that we had a lot of good veterans here and that uh, we worked with the kids, you know. Uh, and, and, and actually, uh, uh, the, the thing is, uh, we worked on, I like to work with goaltenders and Glenn Resch was right. here. Chico. And, uh, I, yeah, Chico. And uh, I, I worked with him a lot and uh, uh, he come a long way, and the, he, I asked him, I said, what do you want to do? He said, well, I'd like to make the National Hockey League. I said, well, I'll shoot bucks at you after every every practice for an hour if you want to. And huh. uh, he said, yes, I'd like to. And uh, we kept working every day, and uh, he wasn't a very big guy, and he'd just stay back in that net, and I'd shoot bucks and put him by him. He'd get mad. I said, well, you're, you're, you're not going to stop any if you don't start moving out and start playing the angles. So sure. he started doing that, and that was pretty tough to get it by him. Man, and I'll tell you what, what a career he went on to play for the Islanders, uh, had a lot of years in New Jersey. I think he's still working, I think, television, I think, in the New Jersey area. Do you still? I think he's working color, yeah. Yeah, are yeah you... I think he's working color in New Jersey. Are you able and, to stay in uh, touch with him? Well, I haven't uh, talked to him in about a year or so. But uh, every once in a while, we uh, either get a card from them or, or uh, I get a hold of them on a phone. I, I've got his phone number. When he may go back, like uh, he lived in Minnesota, and uh, uh, he was uh, uh, going back there in the summer. But I don't know if he goes back there in the summer anymore. Mm-hmm. Who was the best goal? Would, would would he be the best goalie that uh, that played here in Muskegon? In, in your estimation, I mean, there were some good goalies that played here. I mean, a guy that only played here for a year was Lyle Carter. I thought was just a phenomenal goaltender. He played for the California Golden Seals for a year or two mm-hmm. in the Big Show. But um, who would who would you say maybe like the top three or top five of goaltenders here in Muskegon and uh, during your career? Well, you've got to you got to say uh, actually uh, Jimmy McLeod was yeah. a. a a good guy and and of course uh, Glenn Resch and uh, uh, we had as I say we had a lot of good goaltenders come in here Jacques Marcotte come in from when he played at St. Paul and then come here one year and uh, uh, we had a lot of good goaltenders you know but uh, outstanding uh, them guys uh, I'd say were the most outstanding ones you wound up uh, uh, the old cat the cat the cat yeah. was good uh, good goaltender Lyle Carter and, yeah. Uh, yeah and 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 uh uh, I heard from them uh, when we were, they were getting a hold of the book to write the book in Muskegon, and sure. uh, he, he was uh, <laughs> he was still a crazy sucker. As <laughs> I say, you know? yeah, exactly, um, yeah, he's a good man. Uh, you wound up uh, wound wound up your career here. You wound up coaching the 
Muskegon Mohawks and then uh, worked in the in the front office and that was kind of a tough time because obviously that was uh, Jerry Delise had, had left uh, the the team was sold to uh, I guess uh, some local uh, owners here the doctors and, and things like that and just the, the the money necessarily wasn't there and that was kind of a it was kind of a tough time to just keep hockey going here wasn't it yes it was uh, you know uh, uh, trying to get the the players and uh, getting the right players uh it, it it was it got to be pretty tough you know and mm-hmm. uh, so uh in 79 i just decided i i'd had enough and right. uh, uh, got out so and you've been golfing i know you've been a golf pro at various uh, locations and uh that uh, you still are are active on the course doing quite well i guess right well yeah i uh i've been teaching for 49 years and uh, i really like the game uh, as I say, I had the best of both worlds, uh, you know, playing hockey in the winter and golf in the summer. So uh, I, I was really, really lucky, and uh, it, it's done very well for me. And I've met a lot of nice people here, and uh, uh, we do have a lot of great hockey fans in this town. And you still, like you said, uh, you still are very uh, active, at least in going to the games and supporting the uh, the Muskegon the hockey team. So you, you, you never hockey never gets too far from Brian McClay, does it? No, I I enjoy going to the games and watching and talking to the guys and and uh, you know just see how they're doing and if, uh, I can you know give them any pointers or whatever uh, I'd like to do that. Uh, but of course, in uh, about uh, another seven or eight days here, I'm. I'm leaving for the Southland, so <laughs> that's when my golf comes in pretty good. There you go. <laughs> hey, Brian, it's a pleasure. You certainly were one of my heroes uh, growing up, and it was uh, great that uh, kind of uh, was able to stumble across you on the on the golf course there, and uh, we've had a lot of fun and uh, and appreciate the friendship, Brian. Well, I appreciate you guys, too. You know, I, I look forward to you guys coming out there. And, and playing and uh, having a good time. We try not to tear up your course too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we had the wrecking crew in there after you guys a few times, but that, that's all right. Uh, you can keep coming back anytime. All right. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, John. You yeah, bet. we turned the thing into quite a reclamation yeah. project. What yeah. a blessing to have had Brian McClay become such a big part of this community and yeah. such a great part of Muskegon hockey history. Yeah, he's really kind of a, you know, we talk about the die cast for the, the hockey player that comes here, lives here, settles down, marries yeah. a local girl. Brian did all of that and stayed here and has become uh, certainly a viable uh, uh, part of the community here. And uh, just uh, neat to hear in those, those stories and uh, of, a, of a time gone by and, you know, making $6,500 a year. That was big money back then. Of course, a lot of the Muskegon guys back then were probably pretty ticked off because the Canadian hockey guys came in and took all the pretty girls. Right. <laughs> That's for sure. So what a what a how fascinating and obviously really solidifies the idea of how competitive hockey would have been back there when uh, a guy who went on to score, you know, over 100 goals in two years in the NHL can't crack the club locally. Well, yeah, just think about that. Brian says, you know, you go to camp, 150, 160 guys, there's only six teams yeah. in the whole league. There's only, you know, how many spots on a hockey team you got to compete sure. with 160. And that just goes to show you, and, and Muskegon was a uh, a farm team of mm, the Montreal mm, Canadiens, mm. and so that just goes to show you how these players are literally Literally stockpiled into the minor leagues and just some some great talent down here during uh, certainly one of the golden eras of, of hockey in, in Muskegon. He named so many of those great players that uh, wore the CH on their jersey right. and growing up as I did with Hockey Night in Canada, a big part of our life in the Detroit area. Uh, you know, Ivan Cornwaye, J.C. Tremblay. Yeah. The names go right. on and on. Jean Beliveau. Gump uh, Worsley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the great names, huh? But oh, absolutely yeah. such a romantic time to watch it. Right. And, uh, you know, I don't know if ESPN Classic still shows a lot of those games. but The goaltenders know. didn't wear masks, remember? Right. Well, Gump, we talked about Gump, he didn't wear sure. a mask. I remember seeing live games where he was there. Yeah. Can't remember who he would have been playing for at the time. Yeah, played for uh, Montreal for a long time. I think he played a little bit for the Blackhawks. Might have gotten into Toronto. That's the thing with six teams. Usually, everybody played for yeah. all six of them at and one I time. I think or he another. lasted long enough to see expansion. Yeah, exactly. You know, the North Stars came in, and teams at least it like was that. waistline. Was, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hence the name Gump. I think. Uh, what a treat to have Brian on, and yeah. we look forward to having more folks that represented 
hockey history here in Muskegon on in future shows. It's going to be a fun winner as we help celebrate yep. the Lumberjacks Muskegon Hockey 50th anniversary. And just like Brian said, you wonder if there aren't some kids out there now that 20, 30 years from now will be sitting around having a coffee, drinking a beer, watching uh, the NHL on the big screen at their favorite pub and saying, boy, remember when Todd Robinson played here, Billy Collins, yeah, Robin Bouchard? Sure. Certainly quite possible. Yeah, exactly. Yep, that uh, is their heroes now. So it, uh, the beat goes on, as they say. I want to thank again, Brian, for taking some time to go down memory lane with us. Brian, for taking some time to go down